much slack. Whenever you're ready. All right, ready. Go ahead. Hello friends, tonight we're going to take a look at this Aero Precision M4E1 upper. This is the second video in a series in which I review some of the awesome parts from Aero that make up my fantastic lightweight M4E1 rifle, and it's got the uh, new Atlas rails. They feel like they weigh almost nothing and are really nice. Aero makes some of the best stuff around, and this is my favorite rifle ever, regardless of manufacturer. I like it so much that I made another one exactly like it, and uh, there's a third one in progress. Originally, this was going to be a review just of the upper, but as I got into that, I realized that you guys probably don't want to hear me talk about what is essentially just a, a beautifully machined uh, aluminum tube in which the bolt rides. So instead, <laughs> this is kind of going to be an overview of all the parts that, uh, that make up this upper arrangement instead. I think that'll be a lot more interesting, and uh, this will be followed by uh, in-depth reviews of each individual part, just like we, we did for the lower. So hopefully that'll be interesting this way, and uh, we've got a 16-inch ballistic advantage barrel here. This is the pencil profile, very lightweight, and the nickel boron arrow bolt. This is a mid-length gas system, and of course the handguards are the 15-inch uh, Atlas. Features. The mundane first. Uh, the M4E1 uppers are made from 7075 T6 aluminum. Uh, they weigh 6.9 ounces, exactly the same as a mil spec upper. But as you can see from the geometry, these don't exactly look like mil spec uppers. Uh, the first thing you notice is that these have this beautiful angular geometry. I really like that. So the M4E1 is a forged upper, but the angular geometry makes it look like billet. We also see that our uh, forward assist pinhole there is threaded for this, uh, this hex screw pin. It's a small quality of life improvement, but it matters. And the M4E1 lower has many such small improvements. But with the upper, eh, there's just, there's frankly less to improve. It looks like we've got uh, M4 feed ramps. I don't know if you can actually see that. It's kind of dark. But uh, the uh, 1913 rails on top. Uh, these are cut a little bit differently to match up perfectly with the Atlas rails, and let's see what that looks like. The transition to the handguards is nearly seamless. It looks and feels great. And while we're taking a look, uh, the upper generally matches up with the lower in a very pleasing way. This raised bit by the bolt release is a little bit weird, and I'm not quite sure why they didn't match that up a little bit better. But still, everything else is so beautiful that uh, that unevenness there doesn't really bother me. Uh, the Atlas rail, even the 15-inch model here, uh, weighs almost nothing, 7.95 ounces, and the 16-inch ballistic advantage barrel is just 23 ounces. Uh, the bolt carrier group is the standard 11.5 ounces, and uh, that makes the whole upper just over 3 pounds. That includes the gas block and tube. Though there are lighter uppers out there, that's extremely light. That's uh, very light indeed. The barrel has a very durable QPQ coating, which has become my preference over chrome lining, and this barrel sports a 1 in 7 twist. Uh, the Atlas rail has no top 1913 slots to save weight, and it attaches with this simple turnbuckle screw down here. You can see my very, very dirty nickel boron bolt carrier group. That's just a standard bolt with that slick coating. Threat. Thank you. 
How does the setup feel and shoot? It's fantastic. If you've never had a lightweight rifle, you need to try one. You'll feel so much faster. Uh, I have a health issue uh, that causes my left arm to be far weaker than my right and generally rather worthless. This is bad. <laughs> It just does not function as advertised. Uh, so for me, holding a heavy rifle is very unpleasant. And this gun just makes me feel free. I don't shoot anything as fast. Nothing handles as well. And as a result, I don't feel quite as confident shooting anything else. But when I was first considering such a light barrel, I had some concerns. And uh, perhaps you do too if you're considering making that jump. I had assumed, based on past experience, that this setup would be less accurate and wouldn't handle heat well. I'd also worried that such light handguards wouldn't be sturdy. I tested this barrel and another just like it extensively, uh, even more than I had when I reviewed uh, a similar build over the summer. And uh, this barrel, just like that one, shoots sub-MOA groups with really nice ammo, and it shoots great groups with Lake City stuff. Every ballistic advantage barrel I've ever had has been very accurate. They just make great barrels. I found that the barrel does heat up faster, of course, uh, being so much lighter, uh, but my groups don't open up nearly as much as I thought they would, and they don't drift as much as I had figured either. And uh, when they do open and drift, and they do that with any barrel if it gets hot enough, uh, the groups drift and open in a consistent way that I can account for. This particular barrel starts to open up after a 30-round mag dump, and the groups shift uh, slightly up and to the right, uh, but the group only opens up to about 1.5 MOA with the good stuff and 2.5 to 3 with Lake City, so not bad at all. And the shift up and to the right is about 2 inches at 100 yards, so you're still hitting a, a standard man-sized target at 300 yards without even adjusting your aim at all. And heavy barrels open up and shift too, they just do so after more heat buildup. But there is another side effect to this lighter barrel. Uh, with a heavy barrel, I would notice that it would take seemingly forever for the damn thing to cool down and for my groups to shrink. And uh, this lightweight pencil barrel sheds heat rapidly. Uh, if, if I dump uh, two mags through this gun, I can't touch the rails without gloves. But five minutes later, the barrel is tolerably cool again, and uh, your rifle is back to shooting uh, damn near cold groups. And you just can't do that with a fatter barrel. Often I shoot all afternoon, and this pencil barrel increases my actual time spent shooting the gun as I'm not sitting uh, waiting for a heavy-ass barrel to cool. I rarely hear folks talk about how much of an advantage these nickel boron bolts are. I've heard it said often that they're easier to clean, and while yes, they are a little bit easier to clean, in my experience, that's been far from the greatest advantage. Uh, nickel boron bolts, once they wear in with your gun, they feel incredibly slick and enhance reliability. These bolts run so smoothly that unlike phosphate bolts, uh, which even on guns with really high round counts that ought to run about as smooth as such a thing can, uh, can run, they still feel like they're a little bit rough. But uh, these, on the other hand, they seem to almost power through caked in sludge and whatnot because they're running so so slickly. So they uh, they take a lot longer to actually get bogged down and then they just run longer in between cleanings. And maybe this is my imagination, but I always feel like phosphate coated bolts are just hanging a little bit in the upper, like they're fighting their own movement. Uh, for instance, you know, when you do a, a chamber check with a phosphate bolt, a lot of times they'll hang and you have to press them home with the forward assist. But the nickel boron bolt, it wants to go home. It smoothly uh, slides right back into place no matter where you release it generally. Once they're worn in and the charging handle has to have worn that notch in on the other side as well. But uh, as long as they're, they're adequately lubed, they are incredibly slick and they don't require as much lubrication either. So I love these, and I don't, I don't really use anything else anymore. In fact, I think I only have nickel boron bolts installed. Threat. Final thoughts. It's funny, when you mention lightweight AR-15s, there are always some folks who step in and say, if you think your rifle is too heavy, you need to lift more weights or drink protein sludge or, or eat some trail mix or whatever. And uh, uh, to them, I say, why not take any advantage? Uh, if you shoot well with an 11-pound quad-railed cinder block with a PEC-15 and a backup PEC-15, imagine how well you'll shoot with something like this. And this is not a hard and fast rule, but uh, in general, I think a lot of the folks on the internet saying, oh, you know, weight on your rifle doesn't matter. I, th I don't think that those folks actually shoot their rifles very often. I'll personally take any advantage that I can get. 
Uh, but it's more than that. Barrel technology has advanced to a place where heavy barrels just aren't as advantageous as they once were. No longer are they more accurate, and, and no longer do thinner barrels wildly drift after a magazine. And heavy barrels still take a million years to cool. Um, and thinner barrels like this will only get better as manufacturing techniques improve. So my physical limitations uh, make it so that I don't have much of a choice. I have to use a lightweight barrel like this to be comfortable. But even if you do have a choice, you owe it to yourself to, to try a rifle like this out. Uh, this rifle is simply more fun to shoot, and ultimately that's why we shoot rifles. Because they are fun and cool and we like them. And this rifle is fun and cool, and you should try something similar to see if you like it. Um, thanks for watching, and in the coming weeks we'll take a look at, at each of these individual parts that make up this upper more in-depth. Uh, but I really appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. There are a lot more videos coming, and I will talk with you soon. Good night.